Hello, uh, I'm Jeff. Uh, some of you might know me. Um, I'm kind of a jack of all trades. Uh, last year I started helping Cashew, which was a local uh, SaaS provider of online accounting software. Uh, they also have a lovely iPad app. And I'm going to talk about some of the things that we did to get us closer to continuous delivery. Um, there's a lot of things in, in this field, and primarily it's about getting your code to production as soon as you can so that you can increase the feedback loops. Um, I'm primarily going to be talking about the build pipeline. Um, there's a lot of things that you can do. Everyone is apparently doing it, although not all of us are really in a position to be super awesome right away. We have existing code, existing systems, existing people and potentially politics. Um, but really, we just got to try and suck less tomorrow, which is a lovely catchphrase of mine, um, and focus on the journey. And we've talked about that a lot in the last few days. Um, the challenge is where do you take that first step? How do you crawl your way out of the quagmire? And for us, it was basically following the principles of build, deploy, get some feedback. Ideally, you want to make sure that you have your dependencies under control so that you create an artifact in a re reproducible way that you can easily automate. Cashew at a Java shop. They had some good things when we started on this journey. They're using Ant. Not so good things. Dependency management wasn't quite loved as it should be. No output artifact was in existence at the end of the build, so we couldn't just check out build and run. We took the approach of instead of reinventing the wheel, tidying up what we had to make sure that we could cleanly reproduce a build artifact, we could bundle properties within the build artifact and we could create a new DB as part of it. Also, you want to be able to deploy ideally in a push button way. Um, you don't want to be deploying from a developer's machine. You want to know what you deploy, what version it is, and where it's going to. Our reality was that some of the deployment was scripted. Unfortunately, it would only work on one guy's machine. <laughs> You've all been in this position. It ignored failures and just pushed its way forward, potentially annoying quite a few people in, in, the, in, the, in the process. Um, there's, a, uh, there's a lot of frameworks out there that can help you. We decided to keep it simple refine the bash scripts that already existed, keep it in a similar vein to Capistrano, roll uh, sim links to make it work. We got there sort of from the crappy state to something that worked. The next issue was trying to come up with how to run this thing. You want to be elastic, you want everything to be automated, you want to have big dashboards everywhere, everyone wants it, it sounds really awesome. The reality is most of us are SSHing to servers, we're manually stopping, restarting things. We're trying to learn grep and tail, and generally there's only some one guy who knows a three-fingered salute. Um, our approach was just go with something that's less invasive to start with. We just put in your relic, it's an app, get install, shove it into the, the Java app when it starts up. You get server metrics, you get application metrics, you can correlate. We got logging going as well through a central logging mechanism. We put health metrics in. We started using Codahale's metrics library for anyone in the Java world. It's really awesome. Took some of the manual reports that were there and just started shoving them into Duck's board so that the business could see what's going on. That started highlighting the fact that the environment was somewhat problematic. Um, everyone likes the old works on my machine mantra. Unfortunately, it doesn't really help when you need to when you're running out of capacity in your environment, you don't know how it works. Um, but this is especially when you inherit someone else's mess and it's running on a constrained private cloud that can't be updated and everything is kind of manually done because it was built from Linux from scratch. <laughs> we just picked Chef because it was, well, basically we picked one. We didn't really want to get into any religious wars, but we tried to simplify by defining the roles that we saw in our existing infrastructure being able to test some of these roles in Vagrant and then make sure that it could be reproducible. The other thing that's really important was we tried to make sure that we did DB backups and restores frequently, get the data into a test environment. We also like the idea of delegating to people who do things better than us, like SMTP and DNS. The current state is that now everything's kind of running in the Rackspace cloud, it's reproducible. Of course, we use Jenkins to push everything and everything's push button and it's all monitored by other people who let us know what's going wrong. The beauty of this approach is it was rolled into the iOS build stack as well, and now we have build, deploy, release pipeline running through Jenkins for an iOS app, and it's pretty awesome. 
the journey continues. That's a great quote, by the way. I deployed and nothing happened. <laughs>